everybody. Uh, Justin Mack here. I got George Ray, our LED solution engineer. Uh, here today, we're, ta we're here to talk today about the uh, Novastar UHD Junior um, and going over some of the features. So, you know, George, with the Novastar product line, there's you know tons of different control options for LED. Why the UHD Junior? Why this big black box? Uh, so the big black box starts out as a 4K LED controller and then adds a full featured 4K scaling processor in front of it all in one package for one very reasonable price. And so, you know, this is something that when, when Novastar launched the, the um, MCTRL 4K controller, that was one of the biggest things is there was no inboard scaling. So you'd have to use the controller and then you'd have to have a 4K scaler in front of it. Exactly. And for the longest time, like, there was really only one option for a 4K scaler, and that was the analog way um, via 4K. Mm -hmm. So you'd have the via 4K and the, the MCTRL 4K con in one box, and this is basically both of those units combined in one box. Exactly. Um, so what are some applications? Is this for more of a fixed installation product? Is this a rental staging product? Like, what kind of applications would, would we use this particular device on? Um. In the permanent installation, uh, one of the key features that the UHG Junior has is it supports 12G video. So it supports full 4K60 video on a single BNC connector. It has two inputs for 4K60, so two 12G physical connections on the back. Uh, so if you have a broadcast plant that is transitioning over to 12G, either in a house of worship or a broadcast studio or a production center. Uh, it is a perfect solution for that. 12G is fixed at a 16 by nine aspect ratio. And many times our LED walls are not pixel for pixel going to match that. You need to scale a little bit sideways or a little bit top and bottom. This box does all of that internally and for broadcast solutions, it includes Genlock. So you can Genlock it to your plant's uh, sink and feed multiple 12G signals into it. The same is true if you're doing rental staging and you're doing a festival where a broadcast truck is providing the feeds for your main screens, 12G in, LED out, all in one compact package. So we talked a little bit, about, let's talk a little bit about the ins and outs. Um, so Absolutely. we'll go ahead and spin this around. Spin away. Here we go. Let the uh, audience at home take a look at the back. Uh, George, let's go over some. Of the, why don't you go over some of the inputs, outputs, sure. and some of the connectors on the back of this unit? So at the bottom of the unit, we have the 16 LED outputs. So it's standard Nova Star system, 655,360 pixels per port. There's 16 ports. That's enough to drive a 4K 3840 by 2160 display. Uh, above that, we have some of the input connections over here. So you have two 12G SDI inputs, both with a loop through. You have a display port and an HDMI input. And then up here for older legacy products, you have four DVI inputs, which you can mosaic together. So if you have, uh, for instance, an analog way ascender, mm -hmm. which puts out 4K, and the easiest way to do it on that is across four DVI connectors, yep. bring them in here, link the four DVI connectors, and you have multiple options in how they're configured, left, right, top, bottom, four quadrant, and bring in your legacy equipment. So it allows you to take some of that older 4K uh, switching devices and upgrade them to drive a single display in a single box as opposed to doing the 4660 process or the 4660 pros. So with this unit with the multiple inputs can you switch between inputs? Yes. So you can switch between the inputs. Uh, the switching can be done two ways. You can do it from the front panel or you can use the VCAM software. So on the front panel, there is a series of direct connection buttons for each of the inputs. So it's literally press the button 
input switches. You don't have to menu dive to find the input select. So we have our source inputs right here. Uh, you also, to the side of the input selection buttons, you see the front screen. If this is sitting uh, backstage in a rental staging event, the front screen provides you information about the input, the input resolution, the wall, the wall resolution, uh, what your control signals are, make sure all your ports are active and you've got a uh, connection to the LED. So if so, a user who's familiar, let's say, with the HD Pro or the um, MC TRL 4K, uh, they're going to be pretty familiar with kind of with the GUI layout of the HD Junior. Yes, the, the, the GUI Junior. layout on the front panel control is basically the newer, smarter, happier brother of the MC TRL 4K. It's very similar, just has some more features. So I know you can you can switch between. Um, the, the controller on the front panels. What if the controller is in a remote location and I want to switch inputs? Is there a way to do that remotely? Yes. Um, so the first thing I would start with is you cannot switch using Novastar Smart or Novastar LCT. The scalar functionality is not available to those two pieces of software. So if your technician finishes setting up the LED using either Smart or Nova LCT, they're going to go, oh, I can't control the front panel. No. There is a piece of software, which I'm going to pull up on my laptop, called Novastar VCAN. It is available on the public-facing Novastar website. It is their switcher control software. And VCAN allows you control of layering, positioning, and input selection. VCAM works over USB or over a network. So it can be in a remote machine room. As long as you're connected via Ethernet to it, you're good to go. So the VCAM software, do I have to have a PC? If I'm a Mac guy, can I use it on a Mac? Does Novastar care or, or is it? VCAM is part of the new Novastar software team where they are simultaneously developing for Mac and for PC. So it is available for both Mac platform and a PC platform natively. Uh, it is not web-based like some of the other uh, scalers manufacturers. It is a dedicated application, but available on both platforms. Perfect. So the, the functionality of the VCAN software, so let's explain what can be done with the VCAN software um, from a laptop, what you can do with it, how you can control the sailor, what can be done with layers, backgrounds? Let's just go over a little bit okay. about what, what, what can be done. So I have VCAN open right now. I have pre-programmed my LED wall. So I'm going to go in here and just clear everything. And the, what you see on my desktop screen right now is the LED wall. So that's my LED tiles and gives you your pixel space. To uh, put an input up on the display, you select over here on the left-hand side of the screen from any of the input sources. You literally click and drag it over, and then you get an instant layer of that source. If I wanted, uh, because the UHD supports a second PIP, I can grab a second input. Uh, so I will grab the, I'll grab one of the 12G inputs, drag it over, you get a second window. So you can put the windows on your display. You can freely grab and scale the windows using the mouse or over on the right hand side using the layer properties you can actually type in the exact pixel size that you want it to be. So you can be very precise. After you've created your layout, one of the things that switcher operators always want is, okay, I've got my layout designed down here at the bottom are the presets. Ooh. So you can save that design and recall it when needed. To save a preset, like this one right here, I select a preset number, I click the save button, little green bar highlights and says, hey, it's saved. To recall a preset, you select the preset, do load, it says, are you really sure? <laughs> and you load the preset. So I'll go back to that one we just created here. Load, are you really sure? Yes. Perfect. So we have presets. You also have the ability to put 
under this OSD screen a background color. So you can get a solid color background behind your content. So you have your two pips and not just against a boring black pixel. Can you also do a, like an image background? Yes, but the functionality has been deprecated recently, so they're working on bringing it back in a more robust manner. Okay. So for now, I would stay with the solid colors. The, the, the graphic background was there and evidently went away, and the answer I got was, oh, yes, we're working on it. So, you know, with this having a built-in scaler, let's talk a little bit about latency because we know that anytime sure. you have a unit that has scaling or any kind of image manipulation, it's going to add latency. So what kind of latency are we looking at with the um, UHD Junior? So the scaler side has one to two frames of latency. You've got to have one frame in order to be able to scale, and then it could be as much as two. Uh, there is a low latency function and that applies to the LED side. So I'm going to open up Smart uh, and we'll look at the low latency function. So what the low latency function on the LED side does is say, okay, I have a, a frame or a frame and a half of latency in the scaling side. When I come out of the scaler, I don't want to add any more latency to the system. And to do that, uh, there's a what they call a low latency mode. In order to access low latency mode, the first thing you have to do is pre-plan how you wire your cabinets. Okay. So every port has to have no more than 512 pixels wide of display. So uh, on my demo display here, I'm using the Absin M29. It's 168 pixels. So I'm doing no more than three cabinets wide. So the width of the column of each data port is less than 512 pixels. If you do that, your total latency is 512 pixels. Not lines, not frames, not parts of a frame. It's one quarter, or in 4K mode, it's one eighth of a line. Basically wow. none. You then have to turn low latency on, which you do from the front panel. You enable low latency mode. The menu will be grayed out if you do not configure the cabinets correctly. It says, oh, no, nope, can't do it. So if I'm a technician, I'm trying to configure, I go to low latency, it's grayed out, I know that I've done something wrong. It's, it's your cabinet port width on one of your ports exceeds 512 pixels. Now for low latency mode to work on the UHC Junior, uh, do you have anything special in the cabinet? Is there a certain nope. Novastar receiving card you have to use? Nope. nope. No. It's all about the loading of the ports, and, and it's the buffer inside the, the actual Ethernet port. Um, so let's talk a little about frame rates. So, you know, traditionally with, with LED, you want everything coming in at 60 hertz. Yes. Um, with the UHD Junior, we talked a little about broadcast, 12G. Are there some additional frame rates that you can handle with the UHD Junior? Yes. So very recently, Novastar increased the frame rates that they support internally to include 24, 25, 30, 50, 48, 50, 60, and all the drop frame frame rates, 59, 9, 4, 29, 9, 7, and even 24 frame drop, which is 23, 9 something. So they've added all of those fractional frame rates and because we now support broadcast genlock and your scaler uh, will output at whatever frame rate. So this works in PAL, it works in film. Um, another uh, comment about frame rates, uh, somebody I was talking to yesterday was talking about he only runs his 4K shows at 30 because of the processor, because of the, the source, the content. Uh, he doesn't want to overtax his computers running at 4K60. Well, 30 hertz can sometimes be a perceived blinking issue depending on your content and your audience. Well, with the UHD Junior, you can come in 30 and output 60 and get rid of that 
that low frame rate, oh, I can see some frame stutter. Yeah. So the scaler in here can take your, my computer only does 30 hertz 4K and up it to a full 60 to make it look better to your audience. It's very, very, that's a, that's a great feature. You know, the, um, talking a little bit about um, 4K and frame rates, I know that you're, you're uh, for those who don't know, George is constantly a contributor to some of the Nova, Nova Star um, Facebook um, groups. Uh, George provides the, you know, a lot of great input on there. And it seems that the, the feature to be able to do drop frame rate mm -hmm. is going to be huge because that yes. seems to be a common issue where people are trying to use trying to come in on a drop frame rate and what they really need to be in, in the process that they're using can't do that and now exactly. there's a solution for for those yes. type of events um let's talk a little bit about backup so you know this is the main there's 16 there's 16 outputs this is a 4k box now Let's talk a little bit about backup. Do I just, you know, because within this unit you have the LED processor, you also have scalers. Um, that can sometimes get tricky when you're dealing with backups. So let, if you could, just let's, sure. let's, let's overview how you do a backup um, system with this. So on the back of the unit, over here, are four fiber optic output ports. They're SFP modules. Uh, just like the SFP outputs, it's the same SFP that gets used in the MCTRL 4K, the CVT uh, 4KS, and the uh, 660 Pro, and the R5. Same SFP module. Single mode fiber, there's four ports. If you're doing a backup system, full redundant hot backup with the uh, UHD Junior, all your sources go into UHD Junior number one. That's where your, all your scaling happens. You come out of output ports one and two, which are these two right here. They're vertical. Uh, output port one handles uh, ethernet connections one through eight. Output port two handles nine through 16. That goes to another UHD Junior. That will actually physically connect to your wall. The scaler in that unit isn't being used. Coming out of output ports three and four, you go to a third UHD Junior. That one is your hot online backup. At that point, you set in the front panel menu, you go into the advanced functions and you set the device as backup. So the first one is set as the primary device, the second one is set as the backup device, and you will have full redundant data backup on your 4K with only one scaler. The only one that's doing any scaling is that principal first connection. You can still enable low latency mode, so you still have one scaler's worth of latency, that's it. Those other one, the other two units are merely acting as fiber converters at that okay. point. Well, that makes sense. So you have basically, you know, this the main unit um, being controlling the one scaler, because you don't want to have one unit be the main, one be the backup, and then you have two different scalers working against exactly. each other. You have the main unit, the main scaler, Correct. going out to two backup units, and they're just basically fiber converters. Exactly, because we're transporting over fiber, you have basically zero delay on fiber. It's single mode. That allows you to put your scaler with whatever your switcher source is. And you have the limitation of you cannot go more than six and a half kilometers to your LED display. Six and a half kilometers, that's like what, nine miles? It's, it's uh, 12 miles? 0.6, so it's about three and a half, four miles. Okay. Yeah, four miles. <laughs> Um, let's talk a little about, um, there's, I, I read online there's a clone feature. Yes. So clone feature is exactly what it sounds like. I have an LED display. I want an exact duplicate of it on stage left. I have a stage right display. I want a stage left display. Again, utilizing the fiber outputs of the primary Nova Pro UHD Junior, you hook the fiber one and two up to a second UHD Junior that drives your stage right wall. 
three and four hook up to a third UHD Junior driving your stage left wall. On the front panel in advanced configuration, you set it to uh, the optical mode you set from hot backup, you change it to clone mode, and then you get a full redundant clone screen. So festival dates, you can do uh, stage left, stage right. The communication again is from the main control unit, which can live over with video processing or in the video truck. Fibers go out to stage left and stage right. They drive the walls. The two walls are exactly the same. Your setup time is I program one screen, I'm done. That's great. So, you know, the, the clone mode kind of works similar to the backup mode, yes. where you have the main unit uh, driving two 4K walls. The main unit is your scaler, does all your, all your color. Everything's done in the main unit, out via fiber to the two um, other HD juniors to actually just, you know, convert the, the mm -hmm. data and, and drive the walls. Exactly. All right. Um, any other features you'd like to tell the, 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 the video audience out there about the UHD Junior? I think we covered everything I had on, I had on my list. Um, so we have uh, mosaic mode, optical backups, uh, 4K in and out, multiple 4K signals in. Um, I can tell them I have tested this all the way down to taking a 3840 by 2160 display and shrinking it to roughly 200 pixels wide. The scaler is a top-notch scaler. Uh, very easy to control. Everything is accessible from the front panel. The uh, one thing that the technicians will need to get used to is using VCAN to control the scaling and PIP functions if you want to control it remotely from a laptop. The front panel, however, is very easy to operate. Um, we have all the usual LED uh, capabilities, so you can store the RCFG files, you can program the wall from the front panel, uh, Genlock, universal power, so 110, 208 power. It's, it's pretty much a, a really nice, very cost-effective scaling processor for everything up to and including 4K. And we have them in stock ready to ship, so. Yes. We're standing by with your orders. All right, well, thank you, everybody, for watching this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were able to l learn a little bit more about the UHD Junior. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please just let us know. Um, reach out to either George or myself uh, at Evolve Media Group, and we'll be glad to answer your questions and, and help you out with anything that, that you need Novastar related. Mm -hmm.